Hello everyone. Our paper is titled Siamis RPPG Network Remote Photo Plant Ismography Signal Estimation from Face Videos. I'm Yi An Li, the lead author of the paper. The paper is also proposed by Yun Yun Zhou and uh, Chou Ting Shi. We are from National Tsinghua University of Taiwan. The objective of our paper is to figure out a learning-based method for heart rate estimation merely using human face videos. Traditionally, detection of heart rate requires using devices such as electrocardiography, also known as ECG, or photoplanetismography, better known as PPG. Although these contact devices provide accurate readings, their application requires specific devices and professionals' attention. On the other hand, LVS PPG do not require professionals' attention. Spatial devices are still needed and can hardly extend to mass monitoring for a large group of subjects. Later on, a number of contactless video-based methods have been developed. Among these methods, remote photoplanetismography, or RPPG, has attracted numerous attentions. RPPG is extracted by analyzing blood volume changes in optical information. Here, we propose the using face regions. RPPG is extracted through analyzing the recorded face regions. After work, we can detect heart rate through Fourier transformation. There are several traditional non-learning based methods have been proposed. Nonetheless, without resorting to any contact devices, these video-based methods are inherently vulnerable to environmental interference, such as illumination and the subject's motion, such as body and muscle movement during the recording stage. Recently, with the success of deep learning, several learning-based methods have been developed for RPPG estimation. The previous learning-based method usually required quite a few image preprocessing steps, such as facial landmark detection, RI detection, etc. These preprocessing steps may diminish the subtle chrominous changes in face videos and thus lead to poor estimation of RPPG signals. Because these multi-stage methods do not directly estimate RPPG or heart rate from input videos, they are impractical for real-world applications. To tackle the aforementioned problems, in this paper, we propose an end-to-end -end method to estimate RPPG signals directly from input video sequences. Our proposed network has two main features, Siamis RPPG network and the 3D convolutional layers. The Siamese network architecture are designed to simultaneously learn RPPG signals from two phase regions, the foreheads and the cheeks. On the other hand, 3D convolutions are resorted in each branch of Siamese network to explicitly characterize the spatial and temporal information of the videos. Each branch of network is used to encode one region of interest into its corresponding one-dimensional RPPG signal. We will introduce two related works. The first one is proposed in a paper included in 2019 IEEE Transaction on Multimedia. The paper is titled EVM CNN Real Time Contactless Heart Rate Estimation from Facial Video. Even though this method is an example of learning based method, still, they are used several preprocessing steps in front of the neural network. The preprocessing step includes RI detection spatial decomposition, and the temporal filtering. The proposed RI detection is meant to extract the cheek region. Afterwards, in the spatial decomposition steps, the input image sequences are first decomposed into multiple spatial frequency bands. Then, the lowest band sequence is reshaped and concatenates to obtain a new image. Next, in the temporal filtering step, a burn pass filter is used to obtain the feature image. The feature image is expected to contain the signal related to blood flow. 
In the final step, a neural network is used to estimate the final hardware results. The second related work is titled Visual Hardware Estimation with Convolutional Neural Network, proposed by Czech Technical University in Prague. They propose a two-step convolutional neural network to estimate a heart rate from a sequence of facial images. Unlike the previous related work, this work is trained in an end-to-end -end manner without the preprocessing steps. The author presents two-step convolutional neural network composed of the extractor and the HR estimator. The the extractor component of the network takes an image uh, and produces a single scalar. By running over a temporal image sequence of faces, it outputs a sequence of scalar results. The results is then fed into the HR estimator to output the heart rates. Next, we will introduce our proposed SAMIS RPPG network. The key features are the following three components. First, before the proposed SAMIS RPPG network, we use a face detector to locate two regions of interest, which are cheek and the forehead region. Second, we use 3D convolutional layers to directly process the located videos. The 3D convolution is able to model both the spatial and the temporal characteristic of RPPG signals from face videos. Finally, we present a two-way sharing network to mutually learn the characteristic information from the two ROI. The weight of the two-way sharing network must be the same. And this is called the weight sharing. This kind of network is called Siamis network. By sharing the weights, we can learn from both the heterogeneous and the homogeneous feature of the ROI. Heterogeneous one contains characteristic features of two regions, and the homogeneous one are similar features of the two regions, like RPPG. The figure shows the brief architecture of our proposed SAMIS RPPG network. Before the SAMIS network, we use the face detector to locate the face region and crop the forehead region and the cheek region from the face videos. The cropped forehead and cheek videos are then form the new input data. The two input data are individually fed into the two branches of the SAMIS network. The output of each branches are RPPG signal. We element wisely add the two signals to get our final RPPG results. With the addition operation, we consider each RPPG signal is independently estimated and, if one is unavailable or unreliable, we can still rely on the other one. The three lines are the mathematical formulation of proposed network. x -cheek and uh, X4 head are the output RPPG from the cheek branch and the forehead branch. V cheek and the V4 head denotes the input cheek and the forehead video, respectively. FSIM is the proposed Siamis RPPG network, and the theta is the weight of the network. Finally, X is our final RPPG results. It is a sum of the two individual RPPG from the two branches. Here, we present our final loss functions of our proposed method. We use PPG signal as ground truth label. The full name of PPG is photoplanetic tomography signal. PPG is optically obtained signal. It is usually obtained through contact devices or on subject's finger. We use Pearson correlation to calculate the similarity between RPPG and the label PPG. As shown in the figure, the orange curve represents the output RPPG signal, while the blue curve represents the ground truth PPG. The figure in the left is the well-predicted RPPG signal. 
The ground true PPG and the predicted RPPG are highly correlated with each other. On the contrary, the figure in the right is a poorly predicted result. The two signals are hardly related to each other. Therefore, the criterion is to measure the linear correlation through Pearson product moment correlation, also known as Pearson correlation. The Pearson correlation is formulated as R. We define our loss function in terms of negative Pearson by the following. Where X and Y are the predicted RPPG and the ground truth PPG signal, respectively. By minimizing the negative Pearson loss, we train the Siamese RPPG network to estimate RPPG to be correlated with ground truth PPG. I'm Yun Yun Zhou. I will present the following sections. We will introduce the three benchmark dataset Coface, UBFC RPPG, and Pure dataset. Coface dataset contains 160 heavily compressed videos from 40 subjects. Each subject contributes four videos of one minute length. UBFC RPPG dataset contains 42 videos from 42 subjects. The training set contains 28 subjects, and testing set contains 14 subjects. Pure dataset contains 60 videos from 10 subjects and each subject performs different head motions in front of the camera, like sitting still, talking, slowly moving, and rotating the head. To evaluate the performance of our model, we use the following metrics. Pearson correlation coefficient, mean absolute error, room mean square error, and precision at 2.5 or 5 BPM. In the following formulation, HI and HI plum denote the heart rates estimated from the predicted RPPG signal and from the ground truth PPG signal respectively. Note that in here, precision coefficient represents the correlation between the derived heart rate from the RPPG signal and the ground truth PPG signal. The table summarizes the ablation study of our method under different settings on the COVID dataset. Note that cheek and forehead refer to the output of their corresponding branch before the fusion step. O refers to the fused RPPG signal, and 256 and 400 are two other settings of frame numbers in one input video. The default setting is 600 frames. When we use only one single branch of network to process one facial region, the Pearson correlation coefficient is about 0 0.48, 0.59, and 0.59. With the proposed Siamese's RPPG network, we significantly improve the performance to 0 0.61, 0 0.65, and 0 0.73. The improvement can also be seen from the reduced MAE and RMSE. These results verify that by training under the proposed Siamese's network, we successfully learn the homogeneity and heterogeneity of two ROIs and achieve significant improvement. Next, we will replace the negative Pearson loss with mean square error loss. The model will enforce the amplitude of the estimated RPPG signals to be as close as possible to the ground truth. This loss term doesn't reflect our goal of learning the periodic trend. The result leads to a worse result. We also evaluate the performance of using different fusion design. In the table, CONCAT refers to the concatenation fusion, and MUL refers to using element-wise multiplication to fuse the two branches. Note that when using concatenation fusion, additional network is required to predict the final RPPG signal. We visualize the concatenation fusion in the figure on the left. After we concatenate the two RPPG signals of the two branches, we propose to use two convolutional layers and one pooling layer to predict the final RPPG result. The results show that our proposed element-wise addition outperform concat and multiplication. Moreover, by combining two phase regions, we increase the Pearson correlation to 0.73 and decrease the mean average error to 0.7. These results verify the superiority of the proposed network as well as the proposed loss function.
The figure on the right gives an example to show the difference between concatenation fusion and the proposed method. Based on the figure, a simple element-wise addition is enough for the fusion of the two signals and outperform the concatenation fusion. The table shows the comparison with ex existing methods on the COFIS dataset. The first three rows are traditional methods. The following two rows, HRCNN and TwoStream, are learning-based methods. The results show that our method significantly outperforms these methods in terms of the three metrics. Figure A is the cases captured under control scenario and show that the estimated signals highly overlap with the ground truth signal. On the other hand, figure B is the more challenging cases captured under natural scenario. Although the estimated results are not as good as in the control scenario, the results also show well a line wave between the estimated and ground truth signals. The table shows the results and comparison on the UBFC RPPG dataset. The figure on the middle is one example frame of the dataset. The subjects predicted RPPG signal and the corresponding PPG label are shown in the figure on the right. Based on the table, our RPPG detection method makes a significant breakthrough and decreases both MAE and RMSE to be less than 1. We even obtain the precision of 1 at both 2.5 BPM and 5 BPM. In other words, there is no subject's MAE is smaller than 2.5 BPM. The table on the left shows our results and comparison on the original pure dataset, while the table on the right shows the results using the uncompressed pure dataset. In this case of lossless video, which is shown on the left, we can see a significant performance gap between this dataset and former COVID dataset. We assume that it is because the uncompressed videos have better quality. As for the case of compressed video, we follow the settings of other existing works to compress the pure dataset into MPEG-4 format and conduct experiments on the compressed videos. According to the result in the table on the right, our method is insensitive to the compression artifacts and still outperforms all the existing methods. To evaluate the generalizability of our proposed method, we perform cross dataset experiments on UBFC RPPG and pure dataset and show the results in the following table. That is, we train the network on one dataset but directly test the model on the other dataset, as shown in the first part of the table. When testing on UBFC RPPG dataset, we obtain degraded performance if using the model trained on the pure dataset instead of the same UBFC RPPG dataset. This degradation is expected because the two datasets behave differently. Nonetheless, the results still outperform existing methods and verify the generalizability of our network. On the other hand, in the second part of the table, we test on pure dataset. In this case, we have better cross data dataset performance than the original same dataset setting. We believe it is because that UBFC RPPG covers wider variation of pulses and illumination and thus is more suitable to train a robust model than the pure dataset. We propose a novel semantics RPPG network to estimate RPPG from facial videos. The contributions are listed as follows. First, we construct 3D CNN to model the spatial and temporal characteristics of RPPG signals from two facial regions. Second, the weight sharing mechanism greatly leverages the capability of learning robust features from multiple facial regions. Finally, our experimental results on three benchmark datasets verify the effectiveness of our proposed method and significantly outperform all the existing methods. And that's all our presentation. Thank you.